Welcome to this video on research designs. My name is Dr. Manyara. This will be an overview of research designs and how to choose a particular design based on the study that you want to undertake. In this video, we will define research and I will give you reasons why we conduct research, after which I will introduce research designs. Before we talk about research designs, let us first see how and why we conduct research. Research starts with an idea or a question that one wants to answer. If you work in a community and you notice that there is an increase in diarrhea among children, you need to ask why. The why is the reason that you may go into this research. Once you have settled for this, you will then do a review of literature to find out what is known about the topic of your interest. At this point, you may discover that what you wanted to research on is already in the public domain and you may need to, to change your path to something different. Literature also gives you an idea of what gaps there are in the subject of your interest. Once you complete this process, you can now formulate a question based on your idea and the literature review. It is at this point that you now need to select an appropriate study design to suit the data and the information that you want to collect. Without an appropriate design, your research may not answer your question. So then what is a research design? It is a specific plan or a protocol or a roadmap for conducting a study and which allows you to get to your intended des destination. The intended destination is really your desired findings, which answer your question. A research design is like a standard operating procedure for research. There are several reasons for conducting research. One of the main reasons is to solve an existing problem. For example, the reasons for diarrhea in a community. The other is to contribute to the body of knowledge of research for example, in the current situation in the world, we are looking for information on how to manage COVID-19. The research can also determine which of the available treatments work better. And an example of this is comparing beta blockers and diuretics in the management of hypertension. Research can also guide in approving or disapproving theories that have all along been thought to be effective and in this case we could ask does oxygen really work in patients with COVID-19? Once you have looked at the idea or existing problem that you wanted to study you must then develop a research question that you want to be able to answer once the research is done. These are examples of questions that you might want to ask and then go ahead to answer them in a research setting. I hope you get the drill. These are more questions in HIV. You will find that some of them have already been answered or we already have answers to some of them, but these are examples of how such information actually started. You can now try to write some of the questions that you'd want to research on in the area of your specific study. Once you've settled on a research question, it is time to decide on the best research design to use in order to get the most out of the research. Choosing a design will depend on several factors like your goals, your skills as a researcher, and even the time and the funds that you have at that particular point in time. As Ali alluded, the design will also depend on what is known about the subject of your research, the time and money available. If you're doing a research, for example, which follows up uh, smoking subjects, to determine how many develop lung cancer, you will have to do this study for years because lung cancer develops very slowly over the years. The question to ask is, do you really have the money or the time to do such a study? Research designs are grouped into two groups. We have descriptive and analytical studies. Descriptive studies merely try to describe the data on one or more characteristics of the group or the individual that you're studying. 
and this includes who is affected, when, when they were affected, and where the situation occurred. These do not try to answer the question or establish relationships between variables. An example of this is if we try to determine who is presenting with diarrhea in a certain community. Analytical studies, on the other hand, as the name suggests, establish causal relationships between variables by asking questions like how and why. In this case, the question would be why are people presenting with diarrhea in such a community? As we have already mentioned, study designs are grouped to two, that is descriptive and analytic. As we can see here, examples of descriptive studies include case reports, case series, and cross-sectional surveys. Please note that cross-sectional surveys fall into the two categories of both descriptive and analytical. Descriptive designs describe who, when, and where the situation or the disease occurred. These are the simplest study designs and are a stepping stone to the next set of research designs. Case study, case series, and cross-sectional fall in this category. This is an example of a case series. Before the HIV virus was known as it currently is, back in 1981, young homosexual men presented with community-acquired pneumonia, which was a manifestation of cellular immune dysfunction. Each of these young presenting with pneumonia was a case study, but together the case studies formed a case series. Analytic studies are further grouped into two, that is non-experimental and experimental. Non-experimental studies are further categorized into cross-sectional, case control, and cohort studies. The experimental studies is what is known as the randomized trials or randomized controlled trials, but can also be randomized and controlled trials. In analytic designs, the investigator assesses the effect of the exposure or intervention on an outcome. In this case, the use of oxygen, which is an intervention, on COVID-19 patients should lead to the reduction of severe disease. And reduction of severe disease is actually the outcome. Another example here is observing smokers and developing of lung cancer. In this case, smoking is the exposure and lung cancer is the outcome. Depending on how the question is asked, one has to choose a different analytic study design to be able to answer the question. To sum it all, you have to choose a research design that best suits your research. It is not possible to correct a poor research design after the study is done. In summary, research design is a protocol or procedure for carrying out research. There are two main groups of research designs that is descriptive, which is a basic research that answers the questions who, where, and when. They form the basis for other research. Analytic studies, on the other hand, are observational and can be experimental or non-experimental. The experimental studies are the good standard of research. One must choose the research design depending on the research question to get the most out of the data collected. Thank you for watching and listening. This is Dr. Manyara and I hope you now know the different research designs that you can choose for your research.